of your wonderful mercy, the words us, Lord. Oh, your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, Lord God. Oh, all our lives, all our lives, you have been faithful, Lord. Oh, the reason that we are standing here, it's because of your faithfulness, Lord God. Oh. And all my life you have been faithful. If you, he's been faithful to you, come on, sing it out. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am. time we say all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so good and all my life you have been so so fails me for your mercy never fails oh all my days i've been held in your hands oh yes lord from the moment that i wake up until i lay my head oh i will say
your name be lifted up, Lord God. Oh, oh, oh. Only the voices we say all my life. And all my life you have. With everything that we got, we will say all my life. And all my life you have been so, so. One more time we say all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been faithful Oh yes Lord And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am Praise the Lord. Thank you for your warm welcome. And a very good morning to each and every one of you. And I bring greetings as well in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And greetings to you, our well viewers, who from time to time would join us to the means of communication like Facebook, and YouTube, we welcome you as well. And we pray that today God is going to do mighty things in your life and in our lives as well. I would like to thank the Apostle for allowing me once again to be standing here in your midst and to deliver God's Word. So before I go any further, I would like to sing a song. And this song is relevant with what I'm going to, to share today. Amen? Will you allow me to do so? Okay. And you can join with me as well. And the song goes like this. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me, and He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side. With love and for each new day, He will make a way, and He will make a way, and God will make a way. Where there seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see He will make a way for me And He will be my guide Hold me closely to His side With love and strength for each new day he will make a way, and He will make a way. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, for this wonderful time, Lord, that you've given us, Lord. Once again, Lord, to be here in your midst, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for allowing us, Lord, to come and worship you, Lord Jesus. 
Lord, at this point of time, Lord, I surrender myself to you, Lord. I'm just an instrument ready to be used by you, Lord. And Lord, whatever you have for each and every one of us today, Lord, I pray, Lord, that let the word, Lord, that comes out, Lord, from my mouth, by you, Lord, change our lives, Lord God, Jesus. And Lord, let this day, Lord, be encouraged, each and every one of us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, once again. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence in this place. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray, amen, amen. Throughout Scripture, we have read of instances where, where God make a way for his people. When God was to wipe out each and every one from the face of the earth, both men and women, even animals, at that point of time, God make a way for Noah. And he tell Noah to build an ark. To build an ark. You'll find that in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to 8. Abraham found himself in such a situation where he took his only son Isaac to Mount Moriah to sacrifice him before God. When he was about to slay his son, God provided a solution. That was recorded in the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verse 9 to 14. And Moses repeatedly told Pharaoh God's message to let my people go. But Pharaoh refused to let them go. And we see that Egypt was visited with plague after plagues. But God made a way for the Israelites. Amen? His, his people to escape from slavery. That you'll find in the book of Exodus, chapter 7 to chapter 12. And when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead the Israelites. God, uh, God did not lead them on the road through, the, through, through, through Palestine. Because why? That, that was a shorter, shorter way to reach the promised land. But God led the people around the desert and towards the Red Sea in order, to avoid, in order to avoid war. Because the people, the Israelite people might change their mind and they would want to return back to Egypt. You'll find that in Exodus chapter 13, verse 17 to 18. And when the king of Egypt was told that the people have, had fled, The king had his horses and chariots. He had his horsemen and troops to pursue the Israelites and overtook them as they came by the sea near Pi Haherot, opposite Baal Zephon. That is recorded according to Exodus chapter 14, verse 5 to 9. And here we could see that the Israelites were afraid, they were terrified. And that made them forget all the miracles that God did while they were in Egypt. And in Exodus chapter 14, verse 10 to 12, the word of God says that they complain bitterly. But God is God. Amen. He intervened and made a way for them through the Red Sea. They did not return back to Egypt, but they moved forward. So the title of my message today is God Will Make a Way. I know all of us who are here, we have been in situations where once upon a time we have wondered if there is a way out of our problems. But I'm here to say, no matter what the situation is, no matter what the problems or the difficulties that we are facing, in this life, God will make a way. Amen? The text for today's message is taken 
from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 16 to 19. And it says, This is what the Lord says, He who made the way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuff out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. In verse 16 and 19, a phrase, make a way, is mentioned in these two verses, which shows that God tells us He is consistently making a way like He made for the Israelites. And just as He made for them, He is also making a way for us. Amen? No matter what the situation is, He can make a way. Today, let us look at some of the ways that God can make for us. The first thing that God can make a way for us is when we are in trouble. As long as we are living, as long as we are breathing, problems, troubles, worries, these are all part of our life. No man can say that, or no woman can say that, I don't have any problems, I don't have any trouble. We are all going through, and I know that some of us who are here, we are facing these kinds of things in our life. But thank God, we serve a God who is great. We serve a God who is mighty. He is the Alpha, and He is the Omega, and He is the beginning, and He is the end. He knows everything. That's why in the book of Psalm, chapter 50, verse 15, it says, And call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. Amen? The Word of God reminds us that when we are faced with troubles, when we are faced with difficulties, when we are faced with worries and problems in our life, the Lord is here to deliver us. He also promised in Psalm chapter 91, verse 15, and it says, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Amen? Amen? In the book, in the Bible, we could see that there are two people who are facing with troubles, who are facing with difficulties in their lives. And that is, number one, he's Job. And the other is Apostle Paul. But God was with them. Amen? God was with them. The story is told of an only survivor who survived a shipwreck and he was thrown out from the sea into an uninhabited area or an uninhabited island and after a while he built a hut in which he placed the little thing that he could collect that he could get from the wreck and save it. And every day he would pray to God for deliverance. He would pray to God that he might be rescued from that island. And then each day he would scan the horizon looking for a passing ship. But one day, on returning from a hunt, on returning from a hunt for food, he was terrified to find that his hut was on fire. And all that he had saved, and all that he had saved were all burned up. And what seems to be the worst, in fact, it goes out to be the best for him. And on the very next day, after all that he had saved had gone in flames, the very next day, a ship came. And when a ship came, and you know what the captain said? The captain said, we saw a smoke signal. 
my beloved brothers and sisters in the Lord, if our lives are in God's hand, all things work together for good. Amen. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. David reminded himself in Psalm 138 verse 7 that even though he walked in the midst of trouble, that even though he walks in the midst of troubles and difficulties, God will preserve his life. God will revive him. And he will stretch out his hand against the wrath of enemies, of his enemies. And God will rescue David with his right hand. Amen. We serve a God who makes a way for each and every one of us. We serve a God who makes a way in time of trouble. And the other thing is that God will make a way in time of trials and testings. First John chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. This verse reminds us that the world will hate us because of our faith in Jesus Christ. The world hates Jesus and that is why it will also hate you and me. In John chapter 15, verse 18, Jesus tells us that if the world hates us, we should know that it hated him before it hated us. The world hates us because we are not of this world. Amen? If we stand for the things of God, the world will oppose us. We should remain steadfast in our faith. And even in the face of trials and persecutions, we should know that God will always make way for us. One of the biggest examples of a person going through trials and testing and later become better for it is Joseph. Joseph's brothers traded him into become an enslaved person. We find that in Genesis chapter, 7, chapter 37. And he went through many difficulties and he went through many trials in his life. At the end of his life, Joseph says to his brothers in Genesis chapter 15, verse 20, As for you, you meant evil, but God meant it for good. This is a wonderful example of what God does for us in our lives. Just as God was with Joseph throughout his many trials, he will also be with us. Amen? Through those hard times, Joseph learned to be gracious toward his brothers and he learned to show them love and grace. And in, in Daniel chapter 3, verse 8 to 20, verse 8 to 27, we see that God will make a way for the three Hebrew boys. When Nebuchadnezzar ordered that at the sound of a trumpet, everyone should bow down, the three Hebrew boys Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not do it. And later we learn from the story that they were being thrown in the fire. But God was with them. Amen? God was with them. As God was with them, so also He will be with us in trials and in our testings. I remember a phrase or I remember a line in one of the movies that is God's not death. And the line goes like this. When the students are in the test, the teacher is always quiet. Think about it. When the students are in the test, the teacher is always quiet. We find that in our life as well when we are going through testing and we are going through trials, when we pray, we feel that God is not with us. But I'm here to tell you, God is watching. Amen? And in His perfect time, we will just be amazed. The other thing is, next point is, God will make a way in time of our temptation. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it tells us, no temptation has overtaken you, except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, 
who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make a way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. In this verse, we see that Paul assures us that no temptation has overtaken us except what is common to man. And God is faithful. Amen? God is faithful. He will not allow us to be tempted beyond, beyond what, we can bear, what we can bear. He will provide a way out of that so that we can endure. He will provide a way so that we can stand up under it. And temptation often comes not when, not when we are strongest, but during our weakest moment. I'll say it again. Temptation often comes not when we are strongest, but during our weakest moment. When we are at the limit of our patience, we are tempted to be angry. We are tempted to be mad. And we, and we are tempted to lose our temper. And you know, people, people usually are more impressed when they see us under pressure. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, we need to restrain ourselves. Why? Because one act of weakness may spoil a lifetime of being a true witness of Christ. I once learned a lesson from a dog that we had. My brother, whenever he, he would take a biscuit and he would place it on the floor or on the plate, and when a dog was about to take it, my brother would say, no! And then the dog would look at my brother's face. And the dog knew he must not touch it. But he never looked at the biscuit. He seemed to feel that if he did so, he might, he might disobey what my brother said. So he looked steadily at my brother's face. There's a lesson for us all here. Always look at the master's face. Amen. When we face temptation, we must rely on God's word and not give in to the sinful desires of the world. If we want the Lord to make a way for us in time of temptation, we need to be feasting on the word of God and not on the garbage of this world. If we feed ourselves with the garbage of this world, we will easily give in to sin rather than trusting God. Next, from the scripture, we also see that God will make a way in time of trusting. The book of Psalm chapter 34, verse 6, it says, This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. When we put a trust in prayer to God, he will make a way for us in time of need. And in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Here we are asked to put our trust in the Lord and to lean not on our own understanding. Amen. And in Psalm chapter 37, verse 5, it also says us, it also tells us that commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. We are to commit our ways to the Lord, and we are to trust him. Trust him because he knows that his way is good. His way is the best way for each and every one of us. Not trusting in Him means turning from His ways and to our own way. And if we trust in our own way, we may be wrong. Because in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, it says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. 
Sometimes we may think what we do is right. We may think that the path or the decisions that we make is good enough for us. But that thought and that part or that decision, decision we make might not be the best for us. Therefore, we are to trust God and commit the ways for Him. For He knows what is the best for us. Amen. David is known as a man of the God's own heart. And one reason for this is his unwavering trust in God. Amen. When David faced the giant Goliath, he knows that he cannot do it in his own strength. Instead, he trusted in God's power and defeated, the Gol and defeated Goliath with a single stone. Later in his life as well, when he faced opposition and betrayal from his own son, David trusted in God's sovereignty and sought his guidance in every decision. Amen. I don't know who needs to hear this, but let me tell you this. You don't need a backup plan when you're following God's plan. We don't need a backup plan when we're following God's plan. Why? Because in Psalm 18 verse 30, it tells us that God's way is perfect. As for God, His way is perfect. Amen? Therefore, the only way to experience His best is for us to follow Him and trust Him with all our heart. Amen. When we put our trust in God and seek Him through prayer, He will make a way for us in time of need and he, we can rest assured that His ways are the best way. Amen. And from this message, we are thankful that God is making a way for us in time of trouble, that God is making a way for us in times of trials and testings, and God is making a way for us in time of temptation. And God is making a way for us in trusting Him. Amen. He's always there to deliver us. He's always there to provide us. And He's always there to provide a way out for each and every one of us. Let us remember to call on Him and fully trust in Him. And let us place our confidence in Him. Amen? Amen? Let's commit our lives, let's commit our ways and trusting Him in His Word. The God whom we serve is a faithful God. The God whom we serve is a God who says that He will never leave us and He will never forsake us. Amen? Amen? He is the only way and He is the only one who can be trusted. The Bible it says that God is the same today as He was during those instances which we have read in the beginning. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our God does not change. And just as He made a way in the past, and just as He made a way for us in the future, He will also make a way for us today. I don't know if, I don't know what, what situation you are in. Whether you are seeking for healing from your sickness. Whether, huh, whether you are facing troubles, you're facing problems in your workplace, in your school, in your colleges. I'm telling you, God will make a way. Amen. I'll end by reading again from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. In other words, God is saying, I will do the impossible that which no man cannot do. 
And what he asks in return is for us to fully commit and to fully trust in him. Amen. Amen. He's a God who is always with us. And the same God is saying to each and every one of us today, I will make a way. And I will always and always make a way. Amen. Amen. For the glory of God, I hand over this time to Pastor Danny. Judah Ministry, please come. Let us all rise up and let us continue to sing that song, God Will Make a Way. Today, the Lord is speaking to us, to all of us, and uh, encouraging us that He has a way for each one of us. As our brother has said rightly, we do not know what your situation is. We do not know how life is treating you. But we sure know that when we are in God's hand and when we trust completely in Him, he, His ways are the best or is the best way for us. As we meditate on God's Word, as we sing this song, let it be a prayer in our hearts to allow God to lead us Yes, God will show us the way. The big question is, will you follow in that way where God is leading you, where God is showing you? Many times, we ask desperately, we seek His ways, we seek God's will in our life. But when God shows us His ways, we are reluctant to follow in that way. Sometimes, or I rather, would should, I, would, I should say, many times, we always think that a yes is the answer. But there are times when God says, no, do not walk that way. Walk this way. So as we sing this song, let it be a prayer in our hearts. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. God will make a way Where there seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see He will make a way for me He will be my guide Hold me closely to His side With love and strength for each new day He will make a way for me God will make a way Where there seems to be no way He walks in ways we cannot see He will make a way for me He will be my
take my hands. I will not show you the way. I will not point you to the way, but I will take you. Give me your hands. I will take you. I will lead you to the way. You will walk with me by my side. Take my hands. Take my hand. God is saying, I feel for all of us who's going through a rough time, who's going through a difficult time, who is at the crossroad of their life, not knowing what to do. God is saying, Jesus is by your side. Take my hands. Take my hands. I'll not point you to the way. I will not show you the way, but I will lead you. I will lead you. Surrender your life to Jesus. Today is the day that God is telling each one of us to surrender our lives to Him. Surrender our wills to Him. For we do not know as the Word of God says that there is a way that seems right to a man. But the end, the end, my brothers and sisters, may not be as good. May not be the right end for us. But with God leading the way, with God by your side, holding hands together, you are sure, you are sure that you will not be led astray. You will reach your destination. You will reach your goal. You will reach your aspiration. You will be successful in life because God is our success. Please take, take his hands today. Take his hands today. Enough of your struggle. Enough. The Lord says, enough of your struggle. You've been struggling long enough and you do not find answer. You cannot find answer. Today, give me your problem. Today, give me your confusion. Today, give me your problems. Today, give me your hands. Give me your hand. I will take you. I will lead you. As I have led the children of Israel to the promised land, I will lead you through. Surrender your life to God. Surrender your will to God. Give your heart. Give your heart to God today. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you that you've spoken to us today. You're reassuring us that we need not struggle in our lives. We just need to submit to you. We just need like a little child trusting their parents and their fathers and their mothers holding their hands Lord Jesus today as you've spoken to us we are willing we are willing to give our hands to you hold us O oh Lord as you always are faithful in holding our hands Many times we have gone astray, Lord, not wanting, resisting to give our hands to you. But today, Lord, you've spoken to us, O oh God. Your ways are the best way for us. Your path in our life is the best path for us. Lord, you do not want to rob us of our joy, of our peace, of our uh, enjoyment in, in, in this life but Lord you give as you said for the devil has come to steal, kill and destroy but you have come to give life and life in abundance Lord Jesus my father if you have not reserved Jesus the greatest your only begotten son for us to die on the cross 
what would you would you withhold what what good things would you withhold from us no good thing would you withhold from us lord thank you lord thank you lord i surrender to you lord we surrender to you today lord we give ourselves to you lord lord thank you jesus thank you for this wonderful time lord as your children of oh god as you have touched us oh god so beautifully oh god so gently oh god so lovingly oh god lord you have the words of eternal life where can we go from you lord we come to you lord we surrender our lives to you lord once again lord we de- declare today oh god that your ways are the best ways for us is the best way for us oh god thank you lord and as your children leave this place oh god may the love of god may your love my god my father be with us oh god may the grace of our lord jesus christ be with each one of us and the sweet fellowship that enables us to live godly life for you be with each one of us in this place and even those all over the world who call upon the name of jesus now and forevermore amen 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 Lord